Thank you for that. Right now, we're going to welcome our next live guest. We've got Rick Burnett joining us, who is the founder and CEO over at Lane Access. Rick, thank you for joining us on our show today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Appreciate the opportunity. We're going to talk a little bit about blockchain and how that's related to supply chain. I feel like 2020, 2021, blockchain was like the buzzword of the year. Since then, it's faded into the background a little bit, but it's still really important for what's happening in supply chain. Give us a little bit of oversight. Yeah, it was a buzzword back in 2018. I think fundamentally, the future of using blockchain is going to be implemented, just like we've seen the future of, you know, smartphones being implemented in all aspects of our life. So I think the initial push that bring consolidation into a network to where there is an immutable ledger certificate of ownership on the blockchain has value. I think it doesn't really represent the core issues of supply chain. And Rick, one of the things that I really kind of see happen sometimes within our industry is that we see something happen within that fin financial sector, then it kind of makes its way some way in some shape or form into the freight sector as well. We're looking at blockchain. What would you say some of the benefits does that blockchain has had within the financial sector that we can kind of expect to see within the supply chain? Well, I probably wouldn't want to speak much on the financial aspect of you know, anything, I would rather speak to supply chain values of, of blockchain. Really what blockchain is, is a certificate of ownership on an immutable ledger. So there is a digital footprint that can't be manipulated or changed. That has value in all aspects of our life. And so if you're talking about a financial record, I could see value being on an immutable ledger to where those transactions can be verified. In the blockchain, there is immutable ledger aspects like, for an example, insurance to where you know, there's two plus million trucking companies in the U.S. And if you have a product to where the insurance can be validated with a click of a button, that the certificate is valid, the coverage is valid, um, it's on a mutable ledger to where it can't be manipulated and changed, that has tremendous value in, in a form of immediate confirmation for the shipper manufacturers that want to go direct and connect direct to the 97% of the industry that's hauling their freight. Right, that real value add comes in the increased connectivity and kind of the ease of use when you talk about connecting the industry through blockchain in an industry that is historically very fragmented. And as we've talked about a lot, really, even just today, people don't like to share their data and their information. They're very tight-lipped and they like to hold on to what they have. When you talk about where lane access fits in this, what is your vision for kind of where you guys sit in the blockchain supply chain space? And how are you guys helping to take a step forward in that space? Yeah, I think when Maersk and IBM, you know, launched their initiative in the blockchain space, the collaboration was was really looked to bring together what they felt like efficiencies in supply chain. The core issues within supply chain needs to go back to the beginning, which is the movements of transportation, connecting shipper manufacturers to con who's actually hauling their freight. The value of blockchain can be utilized. Each shipper has their own individual contract. That can be, in our network, it's uploaded into a smart contract in an immutable ledger. So the carriers accept that contract, and now you have verification that both sides are operating under the understanding of this contract. It's removing that middle. And so efficiency of the blockchain is gonna allow shipper manufacturers to increase the number of carriers that they're contracted, negotiating, paying directly, because now there's an immutable ledger, a footprint of the contractual relationship, the payment, the verifications of all the transactions transportation, you know, movements, and all this is in real time captured and stored on the blockchain. And one of the other big things that seems to have really come to popularity or really was really popular over the last two years or really a year or so ago was NFTs. Is there any space for NFTs within the supply chain? Absolutely. I mean, NFTs are going to be in, and, and that's a buzzword that really, I think, got trampled on as well. Uh, fundamentally, what an NFT is, a certificate of ownership on the blockchain. And so that can be a certificate of insurance could be moved to an NFT to where insurance companies can issue these certificates on an NFT that they now can verify that that coverage is correct, the insurance amount is correct. And so, you know, uh, barcode scanning, product movements, uh, field verifications of, of you know, 
meats and poultry and, and produce. You know, those all have applications of an NFT that can be verified on an immutable ledger and stored on the blockchain. So yeah, I think NFTs uh, are gonna have an application in all aspects of our life. I think it, it got trampled because obviously there were some bad actors that misused that initial technology that was being implemented. But in real business solutions, uh, yes, I see it has a future space. So all of these obviously depend on adoption and people being willing to make a change, maybe try something new and possibly have it crash and burn on them a couple times before they find success. When you talk about being able to take that step or being willing to do something a little bit differently, it can be hard to get people who are in the legacy industry to make that jump. What type of advice do you have for those folks who maybe are a little bit hesitant um, or are looking to take that first step, but they don't quite know how? Well, I, I think I, I looked at the, the Maersk and the IBM issues and they said it was really a, a thought leadership and the founders didn't have the stomach to sustain, you know, this type of initiative. I can concur with that because I've been at this for over a decade and there are layers of inefficiencies in the supply chain. And the data that is being analyzed isn't core data because there's no network of transportation that connects the 2 million trucking companies to actually who's hauling. There's $200 billion of managed fees in transportation in the middle that's managing these processes. And until you can bring efficiency of data that people can actually analyze and allow them in a system to go direct and negotiate and have you know, uh, real-time interaction so that you can officially move trucks in and out. You can reduce detention time. You can reduce the million trucks moving empty. You can reduce the 1.37 million loads that are posted on DAT, which is a load board every day, right? That allows them to go to a network that can immediately contract, negotiate, and then tender a load directly to the carrier and assign it to the driver. And now there's direct communication with who's on your freight. They're not making phone calls to a carrier and the carrier calling the driver and he doesn't answer and they have no idea. And, and so the future of transportation and eliminating the initial parts of reducing the inefficiencies starts with a transportation network, a direct network. And Rick, one of the things that you mentioned, of course, is really like this progression that we've seen. So in 2018, 2019, of course, we see a lot more talks around blockchain. Then we start to see a little bit more talks about NFTs. Right now, I've seen a lot of talks, not just in our industry, but outside our industry around AI. Can you talk to where we're seeing AI as it's going to impact the supply chain and our industry as we look forward to 2023 and beyond? Yeah, AI is going to be a huge value uh, in the future in supply chain. We actually have initiatives right now. For an example, as you build the direct network, and that's the first, that's where you start first, because once you connect the shipper manufacturer to who's actually hauling that freight, you get attributes within the network that a system can start to analyze now. For an example, you have a 53 foot dry van that picked up you know, uh, 18,000 18, pounds out of Chicago and heading to Atlanta. Well, he has available space that uh, AI intelligence could alert the network and the guy could pick up two pallets in Effingham and then take that on the, in, down to Atlanta. And so both sides win. The shipper reduces what would be initially an LTL movement that today that truckload carrier doesn't have any access or visibility into. Now he does, and he can immediately contract and connect and get paid directly through a network. And that's what Lane Access has built. So the future of intelligent data is going to make the supply chain even more efficient. You'll start to level transportation. You'll move away from truckload less and truckload last mile movement, and you'll move into efficiency transportation network because, you know, as you all know, when I started this, you know, less than 3% of the truckers had a smartphone. Now all of them have it and they were still using paper logs. Well, now everything's ELD tracked. And so we have the capability, and actually we file patents around a federal transportation network because we see the future of the federal government building a federal transfer parallel to what the aviation system is, mm -hmm. right? They have, when the towers got hit, they grounded the planes in a few hours. How did they do that? They had a single network visibility. 
And so intelligent data is going to apply to a federal transportation network as well, because they could take these ELDs in the earlier conversation, they could point them to a single network, and they would have communication, access, data, intelligence to be able to, you know, navigate, move in case there is a, you know, an attack on the country, uh, a pandemic again in the future, natural disasters, FEMA could utilize ability to go, because there's a terminal input and there's a communication. And instead of pushing this data just and downloading it from the device, push it to a single network with APIs and have a federal transportation network. So we feel, you know, AI is going to be a huge component in the future in all aspects of the supply chain. All right, Eric, it's going to be interesting to watch for sure. Thank you so much for joining us today and for your perspective from Lane Access. If people want to get in contact with you, where can they go to do that? Let's go to laneaccess.com, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you guys. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll be sure to check in with you, especially as so much tech continues to develop in our industry. Right now, we're going to shift over to Sydney Edwards, who has our next look at today's top stories.